With the beginning of a new school year, many parents have to start making plans for one year ahead to help them navigate the options for next year and some of the uncertainties for this year is our guest, the Executive Director of Boston School Finder, LaToya Gale. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, LaToya. Thanks for having me again. Latoya, uh, and thank you for, for being with us at such a, I guess, confusing time. Uh, ordinarily, we would be talking about choices for the year, you know, starting in 2021. Mm -hmm. But right now, um, we're still sorting out things for this year, uh, especially with the Boston Public Schools. There's a parent survey that's really, I think, still ongoing. What should parents be, be doing about that if they haven't responded to it yet? If you haven't responded to it yet, reach out to the district or to your child's actual school and let them know what your plans are because that's going to help them plan um, as they're getting ready to receive children either back into the building or remotely. And so you, you have a couple of options. You can choose the hybrid option and hybrid um, in Boston means that your kid is going to go a couple days a week and then the other days they'll be home. Or you can choose to be fully remote where your child learns the whole time at home. Well, when parents have to choose between those things, they might see frustration either way uh, and they're conflicted. But what should they do if they're conflicted? If, if you're conflicted, ask questions. Call, call your school's principal and ask. I think a lot of what I hear from parents are like, well, what does hybrid mean? And even what does remote mean? How long are they going to be online? What do I need to do? And so reach out to your school's leader, or, or you can reach out to the district just to kind of get some details on what that means. Because the details when you're filling out that survey, are, it's kind of vague. It just tells you like, basic logistics, like they'll be here or they'll be there. If you want to know more, I would say reach out to your child's school. In, in a perfect world, uh, the school system would be uh, fully equipped to handle either yeah. of, of the options, but in the real world and in real time, you might have parents asking questions, what are you going to do about testing? What, what are you going to be doing about this problem I remember with the building? Isn't there some value to parents raising concerns like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's value in it. And a lot of parents are raising those concerns. Um, it's been a really interesting time. You know, some parents are forming pods or figuring out ways that they're going to educate their children outside of, of traditional school buildings. Um, but ask, ask those questions and tell the school what you want, like, and tell them what's working for you and what's not working for you. Because for a lot of families, either option is not the perfect option. And so let them know what your needs are, what you need, if you're gonna be logging on, and when you can't log on, why, how do you access, you know, what, what your child's supposed to be doing. But it's, this is really a time where you have to talk to people. Uh, what about transportation? I know the school department has some detailed plans about what happens when students are on a school bus, but what if we're talking about high school students going from one end of the city to the other on the MBTA? There isn't going to be a lot of supervision there, is there? There's not going to be any supervision there. <laughs> that's, and, and that's the thing I think what parents are going to have to do, which is hard to do when you're talking about adolescents, is really drill into them the importance of safety right now. Like even when you're with your friends, keep on your mask. You know, when you're on the, you know, you have to really drill into like, this is not the time to like joke around. You have to be safe and get to and from school. I think the good thing about the, for high school at least, is they're not going back into a building um, until the first week in November at the earliest. And so I think hopefully we'll have some time to work out some kinks about how public transportation is going to be working as people are getting back to normal routines. What about connectivity uh, to the internet? Because that can vary quite a bit and it's certainly going to have an effect on education. If parents are struggling with that, what, what should they be doing? If parents are struggling with that, I say, um, first things first, like don't be ashamed that you're struggling with that for whatever reason. Sometimes as you can't afford internet in your home, it's an expensive you know, utility to have. And other times maybe your, you know, your internet is just drained because everyone's at home on the internet. I, again, I would say communicate that. Um, the district does have hot spots for families if they need that. And also, you know, I think if you're connected to some 
providers that maybe you traditionally use for after school or summertime, I would even say reach out to them because I know they're trying to figure out ways to help their constituents and their families too who need hotspots. Um, and also request a computer from BPS, request your child. Every kid is entitled to a Chromebook because they have to access the internet. So make sure you reach out and let them know that your child needs a Chromebook. If your Chromebook is broken, let them know so your child can get a working device as well. Well, I, I know if this year we're not uh, complicated enough, uh, some parents have to start thinking about where their children are gonna to go to school next year. Uh, so, um, just starting with the Boston Public Schools, um, how do you start searching and, and making comparisons? It's, you know what, that's all up in the air this year. Um, I, I hope that, you know, we can work with or someone can work with the district this year to figure out a way to do all that digitally, because we're not going to be able in the foreseeable future to do traditional school visits. And I hope that the district will uh, beef up their, um, their selection process and the information that they're releasing about schools this year, because that's gonna all have to be done digitally, unfortunately. Um, so I hope that the district is thinking about ways, and I'm happy to help them do that, think about ways to digitally connect with families, because that's what we're gonna have to do. Well, another thing coming up here is uh, the test for exam schools. It's going to be different. Preparation, if there is any, will have to be different too. So what should parents be thinking of there? You know what, that's, that's a hard one this year because it's a new test and so like no one's prepared. So, so in some ways it's a little equity because no one's prepared. So everyone <laughs> might have a shot at something, but um, we're still waiting to hear from the district like more details on that test and how we're gonna handle the exam school admissions process this year. So as soon as we know, we'll let you know. What about Medco? Um, usually in the fall, they have uh, uh, the start of their process for the following year, don't they? Yes, they do. But Me last year, Medco moved to an online process, and they weren't going to be uh, having keeping their waiting list. And so those are going to be refreshed every year. So Medco last year moved to an online process. So that's one good thing. Um, and Medco school districts, they're outside of the city. So some of them are choosing to be hybrid. Some of them um, are, have remote options. And so you're gonna have to speak with like your METCO representative for whatever district your child might get into to figure out how that district is handling uh, education during this pandemic. I guess one thing that hasn't changed is, I guess the goal for parents is, and uh, it, it's unrealistic to say, to find the best school in the world, or, but you wanna find the best fit for your child. Yeah. Um, now, I know there are problems with getting into school buildings right now. Uh, the MCAS results might not be as fresh as you'd like. So what should parents be thinking of in terms of a great fit? If I were advising a parent on what's a great fit right now, I would say look at how the school is actually engaging with families right now, because that's your lifeline. You need to know who to talk to um, when you have a question, when you need an answer. Um, and I think the schools that parents are really um, happy with or the happiest with under the circumstances are schools that have open lines of communication right now. Um, because engage engagement is always important, but when it's times like this, it's extra important. So I would say schools that are gonna communicate with you and let you know what's going on is, is is one of the best schools you could be in right now. So you can let them know what you need and they can let you know what, what they have to offer. Now, I, I mentioned MCAS scores, but I think yeah. one thing that some parents would be interested in is diversity uh, among the teaching staff. Is there some way that they can get answers about that? Yeah, so that type of stuff should still be reported. Um, so there'll, there'll be some things that you can still find out, like what the diversity of the teaching staff is or even uh, the enrollment at a school, but the thing that we won't have are those scores to see how children are performing on standardized tests. And you know, there's mixed feelings about what, how valid those scores are anyway. So like if you're a parent who really values those, I'm sorry, you're probably not gonna have good results for that for this year, but there are a lot of other things you should be considering when you're thinking about what makes a school a good school. 
And meaning what? Yeah. So, and, and like engagement is one of those, it could be what kind of curriculums the schools are using. Um, it could be the experience of the teachers in that school or any kind of special programs they may or may not offer. And, and right now, how they're adjusting to remote learning is a big deal because we don't know when we'll be able to return to normal, whatever that means uh, for school anytime soon. I, I know there are more updates to come. So if people want to yeah. find that on your website, how do they find it? You can go to bostonschoolfinder.org and we have updates right on the front page. You can click on those. Great. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us. Thank you. There's Latoya Gale from Boston School Finder. We'll have more news in just a moment.